On today's episode of Watch Share Go, we are waiting on parts for the cheap Porsche. So, I bought a car. Let's go pick up a dirt cheap Civic Hybrid. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Share Go, and today we are here with my buddy Roberto, who had this Civic Hybrid for sale here. He hit me up this morning and was like, do you want to work on the battery on the Civic Hybrid? And I was like, man, I kind of do. I was like, do you have a place to work on it? And he said, 100% Jake's garage. Just volunteered that, which I'm sure Jake would be in. But then he was like, do you want to buy the car? And I was like, yeah, probably. <laughs> I know he has a problem. <laughs> I do have a problem. So a Civic Hybrid sounds awesome. And I see you've already like taken the car apart. I haven't seen this until now. Uh, What's going on with that? I was like that. It looks honestly. like somebody rolled some paint on there. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I never looked. It probably, oh, it's trying to rusting yeah. pinholes. Yeah, just like stabbed some it. paint on there. Yeah. And then we got a... Uh, looks like tree sap. Tree sap or adhesive or something like that. The only rust part that I saw was right here. Oh, yeah. That's not, that's not bad. And it looks like there's some, like, trying to form where the bumper is and all that stuff, but... Yeah, so you got the back seat out. Mm -hmm. The first gen 2004 Civic. How many miles are on this thing? 154. How'd you end up with this thing? Uh, some guy, I messaged him a long time ago and he recently got in contact with me. And he, you know, I offered him what I did. And I thought maybe I could just plug it in and restore that battery, uh -huh. but he has the cells that he included. Oh, sweet. I didn't know the guy bought the cells. Yeah. He included the cells because he was like, I don't know anything about electrical. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'll give it a stab, but. Oh, check it out, a whole box. So. A bunch of fuses. This must be the voltage written on them, like 731, because I think they're supposed to be about a seven volt cell. Mm-hmm, yeah, I think so. Cool. The green ones, I think, are the sixes. I see, I see. Oh, they're wow. orange also. This, this is what was going to make all that rust happen. Yeah, he had it sitting full. for a while. <laughs> Dang. Well, I hope I can bring this back. I should have brought my scanner to actually check it out too, huh? I drove it. It had no codes. Okay. And then as the battery started getting weak, that's uh -huh. when it started throwing off the codes. And you think that one was a 12 volt battery? Think it needs a 12 volt battery? No, I got it tested yesterday. Oh, okay. It was at like 72%. Nice. Um, so it should start right up, right? Yeah, that's go ahead, man. Let me try this out here. DED, completely gone. All right, let's get the hood open on this thing, jump it, then we should actually be able to drive the car. Cute little battery in these hybrids. Yeah, I, I was like, maybe it's just, because he said when the battery gets weak, the power steering just doesn't, it gets real hard. I gotcha. And I was like, maybe just the 12 volt and... And nope. Got it tested and checked out good, so it's just, the battery system's not charging it because it has nowhere to charge from. Gotcha. I'll hook it up if you want to crank on it. All right, you should have power now. Let's see what happens. Wow, that thing runs great. Woo! It drives well? Nice. From like a dead stop, it kind of struggles because the IMA is not working, not giving it power, but you should be able to get home. Sweet, I'm excited about that. 1100 bucks, not bad. I Facebook paid him the money so I wouldn't have to worry about cash and also getting out of the bank on a weekend is kind of impossible Especially too. Memorial Day uh, Yeah, Memorial Day weekend is not gonna happen. This is kind of interesting. It looks like somebody taped over the IMA light on this thing. Is that, is that what it looks like to you? Is that tape over the light? I tried to figure that out. They took the um, gauges apart just for that? I feel like that's a lot of work. Yeah, that'd be insane. These gauges aren't easy to get out, that's for sure. You could try and turn it off and then jumping it again and see what the gauges say. Yeah, well we've got an EPS light already, and I, I guess the 12 volt battery is probably toast, because Roberto was just telling me that as you drive it and the 12 volt battery voltage drops it uh gets worse abs comes on it, there's no power steering already yeah it kind of turns into a nightmare i guess mm -hmm. cool that it has electric power steering when this is an 04 that is early yeah everything's falling apart inside it's it's angry 
Well, the gauges, the gauges will not work either. They don't work? Yeah, you can just keep driving the car, but. <laughs> Ouch. Well, we have a lot of work to do then. Birdo is taking off in his super nice Mazda Speed Miata. He's got the Turbo Beast here. And I am hopping in the Civic now that it's been charging for a little while here. Maybe there'll be a little bit of charge so I can have some gauges and maybe power steering for a second. But uh, I kind of doubt it. This looks like a like reconditioned battery. There's no labels on the battery or anything like that. And that's usually not good news. So uh, I think we're gonna do a 12 volt battery. <laughs> and fix that hybrid battery. Get it? That sounds amazing. Mazda Speed Miatas are so good. Here we go, first drive, starting up the Civic again. Hey, it actually held a little charge. I literally unhooked the jump pack and then started it and we don't have an EPS light yet. So here we go. We've got some power steering. With power steering, this thing rocks. I'm honestly very excited to get this thing working correctly. I uh, haven't really driven uh, an IMA Civic. I've only driven the Insight. And the Insight is of course the precursor to this thing. This thing came out as the seventh gen Civic, uh, quite a bit later than the inside. How long will it drive broken? That's our question. Oh man, it is rough with no assist. Wow, that was tough getting out of the hole. And I already lost the gauges. Hopefully it can get up to speed. There's the power steering, it's gone. I guess this thing will get you home, but uh, what an experience to drive. It's shaking trying to climb this hill. It is going to be a long, slow trip home. Oh! <laughs> oh, this no power steering life is rough. If you have to limp a Civic Hybrid home, it's gonna be an event, I can tell you that. No idea how fast I'm going, no power. It is just going down the road. And we are home with my 2004 Civic Hybrid. It made it, but that was really rough. Uh, at least the main road we got on, there's like no stops for probably 10, 15 miles. And it was already going 70, and I was able to kind of maintain somewhere between like 50 and 70, and you know, not impede traffic too much. But once I stopped, it was all over. It would never go over 30 mile an hour again. So uh, if you have to limp one home, you better hope you have a fully charged 12 volt battery or it really won't want to run. Uh, but let's take a look at what we got here. Obviously it's been sitting outside for a long time. It's got some Hankook tires that are uh, dry rotted, but they're, they look like they got lots of tread on them. So they definitely weren't bad. Uh, auto driver window, they won't even roll up the windows at this point. We got defrost, cruise control, electric mirrors, smells a little hot. We got this weird thing that they did to the gauges, which is very sad. Uh, Honda CD player, always nice to get a Honda that doesn't have an aftermarket CD player. Cup holders, 12 volt socket, it's in the center here. Absolutely nothing. Uh, a water bottle, pen, well, felony forest, and uh, I think that's it. I think that's the whole car. Like Roberto said, we've got all of our new uh, batteries here to replace the ones in the battery pack. Hopefully that's all of them, that would be awesome. And uh, it does still have the spare in there, which is cool. And I got Roberto's tag so I can drive around. And yeah, not a bad looking car. A little, couple little dents, a whole bunch of touch up paint, but you know, it's an old Civic. And old Civics are the best flips because they're infinitely desirable. 1.3 liter four cylinder under the hood. And uh, weirdly the turn signal still worked the whole way. There's something that must generate a little bit of power, either that or that battery is invincible. So I'm gonna get the jump pack back on the battery and then maybe we'll get started uh, tearing it back out of the car the hybrid battery that is. Of course, my plan for this car is to fix the hybrid battery very quickly. Roberto wanted to flip it and then he kind of decided that he didn't have the time for it either because he bought it from an old guy that left it sitting. And uh, I am going to actually flip this thing. I paid 1100, let's see if we can get 2500 without investing any more money. I don't think we're gonna have to. So uh, maybe a battery at best, but that's not even a big deal. That battery is super cheap, super small. If we can fix this without spending any money, it's gonna be a big win. With the seat already out, we can see the IMA battery right here and Panasonic EV Energy, got the breaker on, there's the wires. Basically, we just need to pop that breaker off, disconnect all those wires and pull out the entire battery module. They saved me quite a bit of time because I already got like six of the bolts out of this thing. Since the IMA light is covered up, we're gonna try to figure out what's actually going on with this car. Let's fire up the old Autel MX-808, and then I'm gonna put the jump pack back on this so that we've got a little bit of power here. And hopefully, with some power, we 
get codes out of this. And I would assume we'll have some kind of hybrid codes that might answer some questions and uh, basically tell us that this thing just had a really, really, really hard time coming home. Okay, we've got a battery. Let's see what the scanner says when we plug it in here. Got some keys. Came with a quick trip card and a bottle opener and a remote that may or may not work. It appears it may not. Let's see if auto VIN scan will get it done so I don't have to do any work. This is at 04, so it should work. Okay. Load the Honda diagnostics. 2004 Civic Hybrid, yes. Testing, shift to park or neutral, okay. We are in park and it is scanning. It is finished scanning and we have nine engine faults and let's see, five faults from the hybrid system. So I'm gonna take a look here at these faults. Very pumped to have a bunch of codes and I think somebody might have pulled the check engine light because the entire time I drove it and even right now there's no check engine light on. Somebody may have tried to hide all of its issues by disabling the check engine light and covering the IMA light which is uh, super annoying. Why would you do that? This, these are just so easy to fix. Okay, we've got our codes here. The first one, P1035, which is a uh, heater for an O2 sensor, heater malfunction. All right, good, good. Most of these are IMA system malfunctions. Uh, O2 sensor heater, O2 sensor performance, O2 sensor heater. Makes sense if there's no battery power, maybe that'll fix itself. Um, one ABS code, which is battery voltage failure, that checks out too. Uh, all this SRS stuff, probably battery voltage, we'll find out. And from the IMA, we have a ton of codes there. Uh, motor commutation sensor B, circuit high input, battery module temperature sensor one, signal, circuit high input, replace hybrid battery pack. That's exactly what we thought. Charge and discharge balance problem and bypass contactor problem. It has a lot of problems because, of course, the battery is completely toast. So hopefully when we put a battery in, it fixes all of these. I showed up with a Civic Hybrid. Lo and behold, 100% Jake just appears. I mean, whenever a Civic shows up with an IMA, that's when he just shows up. It's kind of weird. Didn't call him, didn't do anything. He's like, heard you got a Civic Hybrid. Anyway, I've got this thing hooked up on the battery, of course. And we're going to clear the codes. Is that the, he was just telling me about this mythical O2 sensor that's a wideband from the factory. Yeah. So this is. Looks like a five wire, doesn't it? Yeah, so this is the later style, which I believe is actually cheaper. And better, hopefully? Probably. Maybe. Okay, we're <laughs> just gonna like leave the hood and then drive around real slow. Should be okay. Sounds. Not sketchy at all. Yeah, it's. So now we're gonna start this thing up, clear the codes, take it on a short little drive cycle, and hopefully most of these codes don't come back because I'm a little concerned at the sheer number of codes, like 15, 18 codes or something. Uh, yeah, it's, that's tough. So we're starting up. Yeah, 18 codes. 18 codes. It runs so well. It does. It's perfect. There's no shutter and there's no lights because I think they took all the lights out or hid them. And go ahead and wipe all the codes. Okay, it is blowing them away. Erasing, 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 erasing. I don't have enough power for the electric power steering because we don't have the inverter or the uh, DC to DC. This is super jerky right now. It's crazy how well the engine runs and then suddenly it's jerky. It wants the engine to be off. It wants the engine to be off to check for codes or to clear to the codes? Clear. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I put it in S, what's S? Uh, super fast. Okay, I don't have power. And then it kind of came back. Man, we're getting 50 miles a gallon right now. This is mind blowing. What's the status? I'd like to read live sensor data, but everything <laughs> takes eight years to happen here. This is one of those really hard to deal with, like middle of a BD2 cars that can take like, I mean, it takes almost seven minutes to scan all the modules. So it's, it's a long, long wait. So we're just gonna keep going around the neighborhood here at 10 mile an hour and taking a look at data. O2 sensor oh, feedback, this, I this, hope. This does have map sensors. Ah. And those are outputting data, parametric throttle position, seems to be doing stuff. <laughs> Primary air fuel ratio sensor is negative 128. <laughs> That uh, might be rough. <laughs> H202 S3 is definitely bad. It's just pegged at four volts. <laughs> uh, battery is 11.6 volts as we're driving along here. It doesn't have an alternator. It is running just on the jump pack. Yikes. I've never seen one of these display this many different- uh, You should get the Autel. 
My you should gosh. see when I hook it up to like a Prius or the Volt, it sends back like hundreds of parameters. We shut the car off, cycle the ignition, and hopefully this time there are no codes. And then we'll drive it again and see what happens. Hey, that is much better. Just a bunch of IMA malfunctions. Don't need that anyway. <laughs> no, that's not necessary. Oh no. Nine, nine faults again. Faults again. Well, most of those faults were three R IMA. Yeah. And the rest were O2s. Yeah. So it checks out. Yep. If you watch Hoovy's Garage, you probably just checked out Jake's channel in the first place, but now he's here doing hybrid things, telling us all the secrets of the Honda IMA system. And now we know that basically everything's based on those wide bands. And unfortunately, we gotta fix the hybrid battery so that it can power the 12 volt battery so we can power the O2 sensors. And there's just a whole lot of problems that are probably stacked up on this car. So all we can do is get in here and start fixing stuff and go from there. Anyway, thanks Jake. Subscribe to this channel, 100% Jake. So we have another cheap Honda that we can work on on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjergo.com where you can get cool shirts, not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. Everybody always wants more Hondas, right? I know I do. I'm gonna leave this thing out here charging for a while and uh, hopefully the battery will get me at least down the street or something once it's done. Hey, you better move the theft recovery bike before it becomes a uh, accident recovery bike, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's the single sketchiest looking motorcycle ever. <laughs> I was heading up Andover Road and I was, there was a cop sitting there in the media and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to explain all this. Nope, they don't care. <laughs>